Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu on this uh, Jumu'ah day, uh, July 14th, 2023. Uh, happened to be the birth date of one of my uh, grandsons, uh, Amir Jihad. So we thank Allah for blessing us to be here this afternoon to uh, deliver a brief khutbah. And I pray Allah that uh, I will benefit and you will benefit from the khutbah that I am about to deliver. So I'd like to call the Adhan. That is the call to prayer, summoning the believers to the uh, congregational prayer and also the, the lecture. In fact, we call this Adhan whenever we assemble for prayer. And many times if you go to the Middle East and places like that, it's a common occurrence that the Adhan is being called and you can be driving along the highway and you hear the Adhan and the Masjid right there. So in the Middle East and in other Muslim lands where Islam is prevalent. Uh, we have as many masjids or masajid, which is the plural for masjid, as you have churches here in America and other uh, western uh, countries, inshallah. So I call the adhan now. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu ana Muhammadan Rasulullah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala al-falah Hayya ala al-falah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah. For the benefit of those who may not know what words were uttered in the Arabic language, I'd just like to let you know, because uh, there are sometimes people other than Muslims that are listening in on the khutbahs, God willing. I said, God is greater four times. And there's a phrase in the Arabic language where we say Allahu Akbaru min kuli shay. So in actuality I'm saying to you in the Adhan that God or Allah, the one and only deity, is greater than everything. And if you are a believer in God, you know that is true. We know that is true. So we said that four times. Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater. So if you say greater, you're comparing it with something. And we add, as I indicated, min kuli shay. Then after that, I uttered, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. That is, I bear witness, there's no deity but the one deity, God alone. So Muslims that are really understanding this term Allah knows that it is not mandatory that we call this creator, or our creator, Allah. We can call him our Rahman the merciful benefactor, call him by any of his names. El Shaddai, which is the uh, Hebrew uh, attribute of God, meaning the, the strong and powerful. So again, I bear witness there's no deity but the one deity, God alone. Twice. Then I said, I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of God. Not the son of God, not God in the flesh, but the messenger, the one that was sent and ordained by God. And then after that I said, Hayya ala salat, that is, life is upon communion with God, contact with God, worship of God. And we know that the Muslim have, have a prayer that we say five times a day, and it includes 17 sections, if you will, that we said all of the uh, prayers that uh, have been traditionally uh, uh, required. That is, two in the morning, then you have the noontime prayer, four sections. Then you have the afternoon prayer, four sections. And then you have the uh, 
prayer just after sunset, which is three sections, and then you have four after uh, a couple of hours after the uh, sun sets, for a total of 17. And then after that, we said, Hayya al Falah, that is, life is upon the cultivation of the mind, cultivation of the intellect, but also life is cultivation of the physical world, the physical earth. And if we didn't cultivate the physical earth, we couldn't live, right? So fella means success. So after cultivating, success is yielded, inshallah, if the uh, conditions are right. So haya alam fella. And many people say it means rush to prayer, rush to prayer. That is the haya al salat. And they say haya al fala means rush. Rush to the uh, cultivation. Cultivation of what? Cultivation of the mind and the and the intellect and the physical world. Praise be to Allah. And then we said again, Allahu Akbar twice, God is greater. And then we said there's no deity but one deity, one deity, pardon me, God alone. I'm trying to rush now. I spent a lot of time with that. So at any rate, let us move on to the uh, khutbah today. And I like to recite from the wonderful Surah 20. All of them are wonderful. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Taha. These are two letters in the Arabic language. Ta, which is a hard T, and ha, like a hatchet. So we have two H's in Arabic, and one is ha. As I say so many times to people, you have to distinguish between the two. Ha. And then the other one is ha, as in a hatchet. Hatchet. Ha. So this is the letter ha. And so when you call the Yavan, you should say, La ilaha, like a hatchet, cutting off that deity, illallah, except the one and only deity. So that's ha. So we have these two letters commencing this surah 20, or chapter 20. And you should know, and I feel obligated to tell you, that if you were to count up the number of taws, if you will, and the number of has in this particular surah, you will find that it is an exact multiple of 19. In fact, all of the surahs or chapters that commence with so-called mystical letters, if you add them up, they come out to a multiple of 19. And that's a wonderful thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, highly glorified and exalted as he did. Muhammad could not have done that. And just a quick example, we have the surah Kaf, which we begin with a Q. 19 times 7 is what? No, I'm sorry, 19 times, uh, well, f forget it. But anyway, <laughs> it's, it's, I don't want to spend too much time remembering. But anyway, the Surah 50 has a multiple of 19, and I believe it's 19 times 3, pardon me. 19 times 3 is 57. So 57 coughs, you count them, and it's a letter that has two dots above it, and it has a loop. So even if you aren't an Arabic speaker, you should be able to recognize the letter cough, because it has two dots above it, and it has kind of like a loop, and then it's elongated around the, uh, the lower edge. Praise be to Allah. So continuing on, Allah reveals, مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى We have not set down the Qur'an to you to be an occasion for your distress. This is a message to Muhammad, a message to all of the human family. This is a book to give you glad tidings and, and uplift you and inspire you and give you the tools that you need to have a beautiful, wonderful life. But only as an admonition to those who have reverence for the Creator, reverence for Allah, reverence for the Deity. A revelation from Him who created the heavens, 
on high, the exalted heavens, all the way up. Ar-Rahmanu al Allah, the merciful benefactor, is firmly established on the throne of authority. Now you should know that Allah is not a physical being, so he doesn't sit on a throne like these so-called kings that we have here on the earth, or used to have on the earth. I guess they still sit on thrones sometimes. Sometimes even in the masjid they have the, uh, the nice uh, garb on, looking you know, kingly and exalted and whatnot, with a lot of finery, you know. But anyway, Allah is the king of the earth, and he's the king of the universe. He's the master, the ruler, the sovereign. Continuing on. لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا وَمَا تَحْتَ الثَّرَى To him, that is to Allah, belongs, he owns everything, what is in the heavens and on earth, and all between the heaven and the earth, and getting very, very precise and comprehensive, and all that is beneath the soil, all that is beneath the oceans and all of that. Allah declares that he is the owner. Praise be to Allah. These particular ayahs, it's reported that they were being recited when Umar, who was not a Muslim at that time, came in on these verses being recited, and I believe his sister, I think her name was Asma, but I'm not certain of her name, but at any rate, she had converted, and Umar was furious about it. And he had told the people prior to him going into the gathering where they were reciting that he was going to kill the Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon the Prophet. So he went in and the rhythmic tones and the power of this message that was being recited caused him to convert to Al-Islam and become a staunch and courageous supporter of the Prophet. In fact, they said that... Uh, after Umar converted, because he was a real tough dude, one of the macho men, you know. And uh, they said that he, people didn't like to bother with him. He was a fighter. He was tough, you know. And so after he converted, they said that uh, the believers felt a little stronger, and they started, you know, being more outward with expressing their faith in this way of life and, and perhaps had a mind of, we got some soldiers to support Muhammad and us, you know. So Umar, I'm not going to say spend too much time on this. Umar, they said, was an alcoholic. He liked to eat, uh, pardon me, drink uh, date palm alcohol and, and fig alcohol and different types of alcohols, you know. But from that alcoholic state, he became a great champion for Al Islam. In fact, he became one of the caliphs or leaders, if you will, after the, uh, the prophet. So we thank Allah for Umar making the conversion, and inshallah, we as Muslims have made that conversion, and we can look back at our past and say, yes, I was this, I was that, but now I am endeavoring hard to go straight. Praise be to Allah. So let me continue with the khutbah. I have a wonderful presentation, I think, to perhaps inspire me again and inspire you as well. I recall uh, being uh, at Jackson State Prison with a few friends. We were invited there to uh, spread the message of Al-Islam. And my dear friend Abdul Qayyum, he's passed away now, he had made uh, some real serious study of uh, beginning to learn Arabic and he inspired me to start learning as well. So he was talking about the Surah 103, which is entitled Turatul Asr. And most of the Muslims know this particular Surah, but if they don't, they should, because it's very easy to remember. And it goes, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem Wala Asri. Notice I said, Wala Asri. Inna al insana lafi kusr. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَأَمِلُوا صَالِحَاتِ وَاتَّوَسَّعُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَاتَّوَسَّعُوا بِالصَّبْرِ 
So he was speaking on this particular surah after he recited it so beautifully. And he said, Wala Asri, this is God saying, I Allah swears by time. So I had been reading the English translation, and if you have, you know that uh, Abdul Yusuf Ali says that it means by the token of time through the ages. And so some of the other translators copied that idea. Sahih International translation says by time. Pictal's translation by the declining by the declining day. Shaker says I swear by time. So out of all of the translations that I've looked at, Shaker is the only one that is putting the idea of swearing into the uh, translation. I swear by time, but he left out the fact of who is doing the swearing. And you should know that what your brother is telling you is true. Allah is swearing by the time that he created. Another translator, R. Barry, says, by the afternoon, we know that Asa prayer is in the afternoon, the word has rich meaning. It literally means time as well. Asad, who I was surprised at because he's very, very knowledgeable of the Arabic language because he learned the language from the desert Arabs. He's translated as consider the flight of time. Yeah, time is flying for real. <laughs> we're flying. We're going around the, uh, the sun. We're in the air right now. It's flying. It's moving, you know. And I remember... Uh, getting my hair cut by my dad when I was younger, and he would like to play this album by uh, Jimmy Russian, I believe it was, and he said on the album, pardon me for singing a little bit here, ain't it funny how time just slips right on away. So as I got older and I became a Muslim, I said, it ain't funny. <laughs> Time is serious, and you should know too that time is serious. So the older a person gets, the more and more they look at, my time is getting shorter and shorter, you know. But what if it would be a situation where all of us from being five and six years old was of the mindset that we should try to take advantage of all of the time that we have on this earth and spend less time doing stuff that is not going to improve our spiritual development, not going to improve our material development, and so on. So inshallah, I hope that I'm impressing upon you the importance of time. Now Allah says he swears by time, and could you look at this from the standpoint that Allah himself is the maker of time. There was no time before Allah. Allah is a samad, that is the uncaused cause. He was existing, and then he, from time zero, created the universe. But he was here before the universe came into being. So you should know that this Wala Asri is Allah swearing by time. So for, grammatically speaking, the Wa in front of it, the W-A in front of this, means the wow, we call it in Arabic grammar, the wow of swearing. There's an Arabic term for it. And then the E on the R, wala asri, I said earlier, right? We don't say it when we recite it. We just cut it off and say wala asri, right? But there's a kasra, there's an E sound on that ra, on that R. That lets us know, those who are grammarians, and now that you know you're a grammarian too, that that E lets you know that Allah himself is doing the swearing. In this particular case, is called the, um, in many cases, the genitive case, the object of the preposition case. But here, this is not a preposition. Wow, wa is not a preposition. It means and or by. So in a sense, it's a preposition if you translate it as by. But at any rate, this is a very prevalent thing in the Quran. Wa shamsi, he swears by the sun. Wa adi yati dabbaha. He swears by the horses that run with the panting breath. <sighs> so this is a powerful, effective tool 
to get our attention. So you should know that Allah is the swear of time, the swear by the sun, the swear about about many things that he has created. He swears by it in this glorious Quran. Quran and Majid. The next ayah, Inna insana lafi kusra. Surely the humanity is in a state of catastrophic loss. You don't see that in the translations. But I know that catastrophic would be good because we have what we call the la of intensity before fi. Fi means in. So the la in front of it means you are in or we are in or will be in a state of khusran, severe loss. And then it gives us the exception. Except those who have faith and they work, they labor in righteousness, doing good, repairing themselves, renewing themselves. Salaha has that connotation of renewing and repairing. And also, as I indicated, means to work for righteousness. Amelus what the wasal bill hot and they exhort they rally one another to the dissemination and the pursuit of hawk which is truth so could you imagine the, the reality that if you're engaged in pursuing truth in your human family is engaging in pursuing truth, that there's going to be some success. And then the next part of this, what the wasal bitsaber, what the wasal bitsaber. And they exhort and they rally one another toward patience, perseverance, and consistency and constancy. So could you imagine that if you are working righteousness and you are pursuing truth and you're exhorting one another to truth and you are patient but at the same time you are adamant and, 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 and driven in all the endeavors of good. You know I heard uh, Imam Muhammad say at McCormick Place many years ago and he was saying that if we just followed this one surah we would have a very successful community, a successful ummah. That's the word for community in Arabic, ummah. So continuing on, time is like a sword. If you don't cut it, it will cut you. This is an Arabic proverb. al waktu kasaifi in lam kata'aka. Again, time is like a sword. If you do not cut it, it will cut you. Ben Franklin said, lost time is never found again. Many of us know the uh, phrase or the sentence, do the crime, be prepared to do the time. So you should know that we are duty bound for paradise or Jehannam. That is hell. So we should be very, very conscious of using our time wisely. You'll find it in the Surah 23. Let me go to it if you would indulge me. Well, Allah reveals to us some of the formula that we need to be engaged in to have success, to have a prosperous life. And he reveals it so beautifully in the Surah 23, entitled Al Mu'minun. Al Mu'minun. The believers, pardon me, the believers in the plural, and that includes male and female, right? Kanaflah al Mu'minun. Surely, surely, the believers have already won. I heard, I heard you. I hope you heard what I said there. Translating, the believers must 
eventually went through is what Abdullah Yusuf Ali says in this translation. We were talking to our professor, Dr. Shaka, one time real quickly, and I asked him, because I was beginning to learn the verb patterns, I said, Aflaha, that's past tense, isn't it, Dr. Shaka? He said, yes, you are correct. I said, well, why does Abdullah Yusuf Ali say or translate eventually? He said, that's an error. And he said, Aflaha, being in the fourth form pattern, which is the causation pattern associated with Allah causing this and causing that, then this is indicating to us that the believers are successful now, they were successful in the past, and they will be successful in the future if they do the other items that are to follow. So this is very, very crucial for you to see that you are successful right now if you are doing the things that are to follow in this particular surah. الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون. Those who humble themselves in their salawah, in their prayers. والذين هم عن الذكر مؤردون. Who avoid the vain talk. And this is about time, isn't it? You sit around and listen to people talking about uh, as the world turns and stuff that's insignificant and whatnot and talk about movies and game shows and all of that. That's vain talk. In fact, I remember you remember Warrior T. Muhammad saying that uh, those soap operas, it's nothing but lies and animal fat. And why did they call them soap operas? It could be. They tell them it's just a bunch of lies and animal fat. A lot of stories being told that may have some truth to it, but has really no value. In fact, you know, if you get some lie in your eye, it'll burn you. So he said the soap operas are lies and animal fat, and that's what soap was made out of back in the day. They've taken a lot of the lie out of it nowadays, where you can put some soap in your eye and don't really get burnt as, as you used to, you know. But at any rate, you should see this particular eye of three as telling you and I that we should avoid wasting our time on vain talk and discussions and so on. And then the next idea, who are active in deeds of good, almsgiving. The word is zakat, but it doesn't necessarily mean charity because amongst the Muslims we understand that it is an obligation for us to be giving of ourselves, not just say, well, I can give if I don't. It's okay. No, Allah commands us to give zakat. In fact, in the history of Al-Islam, Abu Bakr, when he became the leader, the Bedouin Arabs, they didn't want to give zakat anymore. And he told them, if you withhold the anything, if it's just the tether of a camel of what you gave the Prophet, and you withhold it from me, I will commence war with you. And they didn't believe him. And he sent a contingent out there and let them know or let them understand that he meant business, and then they just continue to give the zakat after that. Praise be to Allah. So going back to our, our topic here, I remember reading the lecture called The Theology of Time, and this was by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. May Allah grant him paradise for the good that he did, and we do believe that his good outweighed his bad. And he was saying that Allah created himself out of triple darkness over eons and eons and eons of time. So that's giving you the mind that the darkness was here before Allah. And so I'm looking at it saying, no, my rational sense tells me that time does not go backward and forward. Lost time is never found again. This moment right here, this microsecond, even smaller than a microsecond, it's gone. It's fleeting. Time is fleeting. And that's why Asad says, consider the flight of time. For sure, it's, it's fleeting. And so I said, I do believe there has to be an ayah in the Quran that is addressing this idea of saying that darkness was here before Allah. And I have it. And it's Surah 6, verse 1. Remember it. 
but it's very, very important because this Theology of Time lecture was viewed as a great lecture, and Farrakhan has reprinted it many times since the passing of Elijah Muhammad in the Final Call magazine, or newspaper, if you will. And we can't buy that God created himself out of eons and eons of time, like he got better and better as a God, you know. No, God has been perfect and, and uh, all-knowing, all-wise, all-seeing, and all of that from the onset of time. So the ayahs revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alhamdulillahi ladhi kalaka samawati wa arda wa ja'ala dhulumati wa nura thumma alladhina kafaru bi rabbihim ya'adilun. Translated, praise be to Allah. This is one of the few ayahs in the Quran that begins with Alhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah, who created the heavens and the earth and made the darkness and the light. And you know, you make something, it wasn't existing before, <laughs> for sure, right? Again, وَجَعَلَ dulumati wanura. He made the darkness and the light. Yet those who reject faith hold others as equal with their guardian Lord. So this word Adam, Ein, Dal, and Lamb, if you get an opportunity, check it out in the dictionaries and lexicons and whatnot. It means what they have translated as to set up equals with Allah. But it also means to judge. So Allah is telling you and I many things in this word, Ado. But one of the things that I think is very crucial is that God is saying, Ya'adilun, meaning that those who set up equals with God, they are being judged in the present tense right now. When we set up equals with God, we are being judged. And we know that Allah tells us that one of the gravest sins that we can commit is to join partners with him. And we call it shirk. It's an Arabic word. It's an English word too. Shirking the responsibility of believing in la ilaha illallah, believing in one deity. There's no deity but the one deity God alone. This is one of the formulas for having a healthy mindset, having the backing of this creator to believe in him and know that he has the power over everything at all times. Wallahu ala kulli shayin kadir. And this is very, very crucial for our human development, our moral development, our societal development. Because if a person becomes a deity in your mind and you follow this person hook, line, and sinker and this person is corrupt, it's going to corrupt you. It's going to corrupt the society. When you have a situation, you go into the city county building, you see used to Coleman Young on a, on a big, you know, picture and you go this place and that place and you see that big tall statue of uh, the corrupt uh, dictator uh, Stalin there in Russia and whatnot. Like he's bigger than life, you know. But what was he? He was a corrupt murderer of his people. So as human beings, you and I have to get to the point where I'm not following nobody that's not following what Allah has revealed. And if my nature has the need to be in a state of suspicion about that person, then I should really be vigilant and watchful. We want to follow leadership, but sometimes leadership is not worthy of you or I following it. So this is very, very important for you to remember that Allah is telling us that he is a jealous God in the English language in the Bible, but really it's not saying he's jealous because if you don't follow him, no sweat off his back, as they say. He doesn't have a back, though, right? He has no physical form, but that's the term that we use. So you should know that God is a zealous God. Like he, he wants you to be zealous toward him. He wants you to be excited about worshiping him. Not jealous. He's not jealous. That's a human characteristic. You should know that. But he wants you to know that he's al-mutakabbir. 
He is the one that's worthy to boast of his greatness. But even in the words of the Quran, you'll see humility from the Lord of all the worlds. How wonderful, how wonderful that is. So you should know that time is valuable, and I'm sure you know, but I'm hoping that I can inspire you to spend more time doing things that will cause you material progress, spiritual progress, and help others in those two realms of our existence. So I see that it's 2.10 p.m. according to my uh, uh, clock here on this uh, laptop that I'm speaking to you from. And I want to um, just give you a slight, uh, uh, I ain't going to say slight, but give you a commercial. You say, why are you giving commercials? Because I love for my brothers and sisters, I love for myself, and I do not mind having money put into my pocket. So this is a book that I have written, Lutu Tanzil, that is the language of revelation. It's been endorsed by Imam Warif D. Muhammad and Sheikh Ali of the Canton, Michigan Masjid and others. Many of the Imams have it, but they don't tell you about it for whatever reason. But there are many people who have this particular book or has this particular book. And I assure you in all humility that it is worth you acquiring. In fact, I would say to you, in all humility, it is the best book that I know of for English speakers to learn the foundations of Quranic Arabic so that you can go into that book and see the Quran for yourself and understand it for yourself by going into dictionaries and lexicons after you understand the structure of the language. The structure is very, very important. So again, look at Tanzil, and you can secure this book by going to my website, SiddiqJihad.com, S-I-D-D-E-Q, Jihad, J-I-H-A-D.com. My email is Siddiq at MSN.com. And if you're not interested in learning Arabic and you think you're too old, I think that you still have the ability to understand it because I have taught men who were 75 and 80 years old. And may Allah have mercy on both of them who have passed away now. But at any rate, you have the capacity to understand this language if you have the right teachers and the right commitment and confidence that you can do it. So again, I offer the book to you. The book, I'll sell it to you for $40 and I, that would include the, the shipping cost. It's a cheaper price than I usually charge. So again, Luwata Tanzil, the language of revelation, endorsed by Imam Warif D. Muhammad on July 6, 2008. And then I have the Muslim Prayer Made Easy booklet. It comes with a CD, or if you don't have a CD, I can send you the MP3 files on the uh, internet. This will help you learn the prayer. This is a book that has been out since 1992. There are thousands out in the world. I encourage you strongly to secure that particular book if you haven't learned your prayers in Arabic. You say, well, I'm not an Arabic speaker. Why do I need to learn it in, in, in Arabic? Well, I can say to you that the rhythmic tones of the Quran are directly from Allah, right? So the rhythmic tones of God, it definitely has to have an effect upon your being because it is from God. God knows the nature of the human being and he has given us a nature that responds to his message if we are in a natural state and we are people who want to get away from that which is unnatural and go to the light that he has given us in the Quran. God reveals in the Quran 5.15 know doubt cut no doubt has come to you all from Allah a light and a plain book he's telling you and I that I have given you the light and I've given you the book you had a capacity we had a capacity to understand this Quran for ourselves so we won't be 
hood, hoodwinked and tricked by translators. Many of them have hoodwinked and tr tricked us by translation or their lack of knowledge many times. There's many things that I can say to you today, but I won't because time is gone. But the word hadith appears in the Quran many times. And if you didn't know the English, pardon me, if you didn't know the Arabic word, you wouldn't know that the word hadith is in the uh, ver various verses that it is in. The commentators should let you know that. So you can look at how Allah is using the word hadith, how he is comparing his hadith, his reports, with reports that he knew that were going to come after. Now, Allah, Allah reveals in the Surah 4, 87, that is the 87th verse, but men astaku min Allahi hadithan. And whose reports are more true than Allah? So Allah is comparing what he has reported in this Quran with the hadith and the hearsay that's going to come after. People might get mad at me. That's not hearsay. If you weren't there, it's hearsay. And many times in courts of law, if you come up there and say that so-and-so told me, objection, that's hearsay, right? I don't want you to think that I'm attacking all hadith. I'm saying to you that some of the hadith are true and some of them are not true. And I'm not certain, nor are you, on what is true, completely true. And they have tagged hadith as science. So I'll leave it right there. And at some other time in the future, I will you know, talk about that. But you should know that this word hadith is in the Quran many times. And God says that his is the most excellent of hadith. Rabbana atmim lana nurana wakfir lana innaka ala kulli our Lord, complete our life for us. Forgive us, but surely you have power over all things at all times. And one last comment. I believe it's uh, Surah 4. Uh, also, in the 120s or so in the particular Surah, Allah reveals this. And whose sayings are more true than Allah's. So he's hitting it both ways. The sayings and the reports are better than any sayings or reports that you will get after this kitab was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I close now again with Kul Rabbi Zidni. Say, our Lord, increase us in knowledge. Amin. Uh, Ikama. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah. Hayy ala salah. Hayy ala falah. Qad qamit salah. Qad qamit salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. And now I will make the prayer to Raqqa. Allahu Akbar.
فبه اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أقرج المرأة وجأله بوثاء أخوى سنقويك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم جرى وما يخفى ونسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفأت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأسقى الذي يصل النرى كبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا فأفلها من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تبطلون هياة الدنيا والأخيرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفسه في الأولى شوفي إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والعصر إن الإنسان لفي كسر إلا الذين آمنوا وأملوا الصالحات وتوسعوا بالحق وتوسعوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Before I leave, I'd just like to give you a couple more uh, announcements. Uh, I have lectures on YouTube, so if you would go to my channel, Sadiq Jihad, uh, you would uh, listen to a lot of the khutbahs and presentations uh, that I've given over the years and um, also this particular year the um, Mosque Cares have invited me for a second time here in the last uh, few years to um, do a presentation, the Arabic presentation so that's on the second and the third I believe it's that weekend, the Labor Day weekend I don't know what day I'll be uh, presenting but I would encourage you and invite you to uh, listen to the uh, the talk and again if you secure the book 
I think it would be valuable for you. And also, uh, at some point when I get finished with uh, a project that I'm working on right now, I hope to do a Zoom weekly presentation dealing with the, the content of the book. And I believe you would be surprised at how fast you would be able to get up to snuff, so to speak, where you could start going to the Quran, not only reading it, but also understanding it in the Arabic language that it was revealed in by our Creator. The word Arabic itself means to be pure. Arabian means to be pure and undefiled without any admixture. So if that's the case, then you should know too that this Quran is in accord with your fitra nature and also the Arabic language itself is in accord with your nature. And I think you would be astonished for life about the rational, logical structure of this language. It's the best language that exists. And Allah is the best. He is the better, if, if you will. And he preserved the Arabic language on the deserts of Arabia for his final revelation to the humanity. So again, I extend to you, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu wa jannatuhu. That is, the peace of God be upon you and his mercy and his blessings and his paradise when you make your transition. And I close also with another beautiful phrase that I learned out of the um, Rights Grammar book, Arabic Grammar book. La yazalullahu muksinan ilaykum. That is, may Allah never stop being good to you all. Ma'as salam. That is, goodbye. Go with safety. Go with peace.